that was commanded by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Amen. 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 We are here because the Bible commanded us to be here. So we have our Mr. Kelly in the room on the And so, the Lord demands us to be here. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. He commanded us to be here. Yes. I don't care who is not here, the word of God is right. Yes. Yes. The Bible says in the last days, there will be a great falling away. Oh, yes. oh. There was a time when you mentioned the word there, but Tony, before the sun was down, the, sun, the church be built. Oh my God. But now there is a great falling away. Why are we here tonight? Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26. Now, when you go back to the bit of chapter 23, verses 1 and 2, the Lord said unto Moses, Even these are my feasts. Yes. They're not the Jews' feasts, they are the Lord's feasts. And he said, They were what? Holy complications. And he commanded us that we should do this. You will see many synagogues that are open tonight. Simply because they are God chosen people. But when the Lord said to Moses, These are not the Jews' feet, these are mine feet. And they are holy. Convocation. That's the time we will come together and assemble ourselves. So he specified here in Genesis chapter 23, verse 26. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day, of this seventh month shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So on this day of atonement, first it says it's a holy convocation. You shall afflict your soul. In other words, for 24 hours, you should not eat nor drink anything on this day because it is commanded by God. So you're supposed to afflict your soul. And then verse 20 says, And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. This is a special day because this day is between you and God. Yes. You and God, not your fellow man. Everything that went on between you and your friend or your sibling, whoever it is, your mother, your father, your sister, or your brother, or your enemy should have been straightened out during the week or during the day. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your act. So we don't wait for this day to get it right. This day is set aside for you and God for the sins that you have committed against God. Are you following me? That's what this day is for. So, he said, afflict your soul. Turn down your plate for 24 hours. And whatever you do, do not go to work. This is a day that God commands you do not go to work on this day. So if some of y'all plan on going to work tomorrow's school, God said, I'll keep a bit. Get 
you're taking a dangerous chance. If you leave here tonight, you're going to work. I'm going to change the word of God said. Verse 29 says, for, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Verse 31, ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation and all your dwelling. The Lord is saying this is a law that he gives to us. This is a statue throughout all your dwelling, throughout all your generation. You shall keep this feast. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. And you shall afflict your soul. So starting tonight, in the ninth day of the month at Eve, from Eve to Eve, so you celebrate your Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood a seraphim, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongue from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. And my iniquity is taken away, and thy sin heard. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, Lord, send me. Somebody say, complete change. Everybody say, complete change. Complete change. Everybody say, complete change. Complete change. So when something is complete, it's what? Finish. Done. You have come to a conclusion, it's all over. And so when you change, you, you, you either alter or you, or you make a difference. You shift. So this is the day to make a complete change. A complete change. Let, let, me, let me just reiterate this again that you need to realize what this day is for. 
the sins that you have committed against God. I know some of y'all are this person. I know some of y'all haven't done anything. Why am I, I, I committed some sins? Yes. I know some of y'all, you know, I'm not mad at you because you, you all have to be free, you know, so hey, I'm not mad at you. You can do that, you know, free for But he gave us this day. He gave us this day between him and ourselves. Here, Isaiah, Isaiah saw this vision, he seen this vision. So he felt a commission, a task he needed to carry out. Uh, his message called God's glory, majesty, and holiness. So the message demands that those that serve him must be holy. We are supposed to strive for perfection to please God. One thing, and, and, and we talked about this the other week, about love. A lot of us don't know how to love each other. Some of, the reason why some of y'all don't know how to love because some things went on in your life and you, it, it's, it's missing. Some things happen in your life and you're not, you haven't gotten over that, and so you don't know how to give love. And as I said, some of y'all need professional help. There's nothing wrong with that. Are you following me? Yes. So, it's important that you realize that I don't care what you've been through or what you're going through, Jesus loves you. Yes. One thing I want you to remember is this. Even if you uh, come from a broken home, a lot of things didn't go right in your life, and you feel like nobody loves you, but Jesus loves you. Yeah. Yeah. This is the reason why you're here tonight, because he loves you. Yes. He cares for you, and he gave you this day, or gave us this day, that we can come to him and repent of our sin. So we have to make a what? Complete change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So three things that I says, he says, listen, I, 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 I'm undone. So what do you mean? You have to commit. commit. You have to say, I am in a place that I need help. I'm in it. That's the only way you want to be set free. I have to admit this thing. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. Ooh. Some of y'all been saying some stuff. Some been lying. Lying to all folks. We won't go to James. You know, James talked about that tongue. Yeah. Me, can I borrow you for a few? Huh? Okay, 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 okay. Y'all read James chapter 3, verse 5. Everybody need to read those. So he said, I'm undone, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of unclean people. Say it's me. 
me is me, O oh Lord, and what I'm standing in the need of prayer. You have to admit I have this problem. You know, things going, you know, we so we have so much technology now. You know, we sit in the church and we have text things to people and know it's a lie. <laughs> Nature of the comes on and on. 